Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Well, 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 we're back. T Radio V. This is Greg Reitman on the green carpet. We're going to have a great show today. So, Kurt, tell me, where are you from? I'm from a, a little town called Claremont, which is about 35 miles east of where we're sitting right now. Um, I call it the capital of the Inland Empire. Capital of the The cultural Lemon. capital of the Inland Empire of the 909. And the Kurt, form, former Lemon. All right, I, I'm going to form it. Kurt Pitzer, you are the producer, and Kimberly Levine, you are the director of the film. And writer. And, and writer, and I would say executive producers, right? You guys kind of like... We're a bunch of hats, didn't you, on this one? We do, we do. And this is W. And this is your first. This is your directorial debut at the L.A. Independent Film Festival. Is this correct? At the Los Angeles Film Festival, yes. Sponsored by Film Independent, my debut feature. Wow. How long? Now let me ask you a question. How long did it take you to write the script? Uh, People ask that question. It's really difficult to answer. Because we wonder how long you agonized over it before you actually said, "Okay, I'm ready to like." Put it out in the world. Well, you so know? like the the long answer and the short answer. The long answer is, you know, as most independent artists, all of us know that we, you know, you squirrel away two days here, and you might find, you know, an afternoon after Thanksgiving on, on a holiday weekend when you're supposed to be hanging out with your family, and you steal that for writing. So you know, we all have to keep things going and moving, and we have other work that we do for money. Okay, so you weren't like sitting down designated no. for like. You know, like some people, like, you know, three months, they just wrote a screenplay. and then I, would lo- I would love to. I was lucky enough to go to a couple of retreats, writing retreats, which were really helpful. Oh, that's fabulous. Which ones um, did you go to? I was at Jirazi in Northern California, which is gorgeous and amazing and beautiful. Where in Northern um, California? Woodside. Ontario, Woodside. Oh, Woodside. Yeah. We love yeah. Woodside. Really cool. My buddy Danny Goldberg lives up in Woodside. Do you know who else lives in Woodside? Neil yes. Young. I was going to say, Neil there Young. you go, Neil, Neil Young. Young. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah. great time. It's He's great energy up and there. And the trees up there are just Beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. So there's a, Beautiful. I'd like to get the details on that. That's interesting. So you I went to one of those. To. So I went to one of those, and then I went to the Tyrone Guthrie Center, which is in Ireland, in the countryside out there. Oh, my God, you went to... I know. Oh, I know. Stupid. You I'm are a queen, high. man. <laughs> that is, like, unbelievable. Ireland it's pretty amazing. is the most, for those that haven't been to Ireland, I've never seen the color green. The way you see green in Ireland, um, unbelievable. Um, We actually made a film, actually, where Donovan is... uh, God, they didn't close that door. Donovan the Singer? Yeah, Donovan the Singer. Amazing. (laughs) You know, it was actually my film. I can't wait. I actually want to show my film, funny enough, in Ireland. But let's just talk about Runoff. So, um, you guys... When did you hear about that you got into the L.A. Independent um, Film Festival? About a month before it started? Yeah, something like that. There's not a lot of lead time, so you better be ready. So they give you four (laughs) weeks nowadays. Yeah, Yeah, you better be ready. So we, like, catapult us into this crazy, like, crunch time of actually finishing the film while you also have to do all the prep for the press and for the, you know, the party and all this other fun stuff that we do. We did. Where'd you have your party? We at the Hotel Figueroa. You know, my Amazing. friends yeah. actually were on the show last week, had the same party at the Hotel Figueroa. So Rick's place. I walked in there, I think they had about five different parties. I go, this people must have so like, fun. I'm like, how much money is Hotel Figueroa making? Right? <laughs> you know, and all these filmmakers. They should be sponsoring the film festival. <laughs> it's the only place around LA Live that doesn't feel like Chili's 2. You know, it's like old and it has a Yes, it is old, but it know. also feels very like, um, like the Roosevelt Hotel where you're sort of walking in and then yeah. they're like, these trees, like, you yeah. know, they're popping up at it. It's, it's cool. Vibe. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it's outdoors. It's outdoors. Yes. And, you yes. know, so much of our film takes place outdoors, so that was important for us to have, uh, you know, to take the people who just come from seeing the film and be outdoors with their wow. thoughts. Yeah. So you guys are a couple, I, 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 I heard. And how mm-hmm. long have you guys been together? Nine years. Oh, wow. Ten years. Yeah. 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 A long time. Yeah. yeah. And what made you decide that you wanted to make this movie with her, Kurt? She was making it, so it was either, you know, not see her for a couple of years, or you know, get my hands dirty and help make her help make the film. And what, did, what were you? Why were you? Why was there something personal that you got you got that inspired you about the film? Actually, yeah, my my dad was a lemon grower, so a lot of the things that happened in the film were inspiring to me. The main character of Kim's film is um, and her husband. They are working with farmers and in farm supply, and they, it's. That whole world felt very uh, important to me too. So were you a farmer growing up? 
my dad was a farmer. Where was he farming? See, Claremont used to be all citrus. Yeah. Now it's mostly um, tract homes. So there, the groves that I, I grew up on are no longer there. So, no. Well, I'm you know, I actually there. pick lemons and uh, oranges, and they're not easy fruit, actually. They're pick. high up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and they also have those little things. Yes, that right. Tricky, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like it's really, they're tough to little... Uh, yeah. You gotta be a tough farmer to do that. Yeah, I'm not kidding when I say that. I mean, it's real. That's hard. That's brutal. I did not I, like. I, I think I didn't tough like, and I didn't farmer go hand in hand. I didn't hand. like the citrus <laughs> 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 and the dates too. When you're up there with the knives, you know, and you were cut dates. That's very far up. Yeah. That's so, um, so you got into the LA Independent, and who was the first person that you called? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you called me and, and from the other room. Oh yeah, that was the first <laughs> call we made. Hey, I called honey. Kim. <laughs> Because this is your world premiere. Yeah, it is. It's very it's our exciting. Right? Yeah. This is your yeah. world premiere. This is the moment you go and you make a film. And you s and what other film festivals did you send it out to? We out this is our first film festival. This is your first film this festival. Is a yeah. LA yeah. Independent. You're like, I'm, we're going to go for it. Yeah. And why, why did you decide to do LA Independent? Of all the film festivals out there. We're you in New York. And, and I know you're in New York and you decided to go to LA. So I'm trying well, to figure I it Well, I mean, out. you know, I, th I think that Los Angeles has done such a great job with the festival in putting independent films first. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many wonderful festivals that you can take your film to, but you're competing against massive Hollywood films, and it's very easy for a small independent film to get lost in the shuffle. And we knew that wasn't going to happen here at Los Angeles Film Festival. They put a real spotlight on the independent filmmakers, and that was a decision that we made very consciously, knowing that in order to kind of just break through the noise, you need that. You need that focus, no, you and you do. need that attention. And actually, the, uh, I, we, I knew the, the founder, Robert Faust, I guess used mm -hmm. to run Los Angeles mm -hmm. Independent Film Festival back in the day, and that film festival has grown. And, and, and when we were down there the other night on Saturday night, we, I was amazed to see all the sponsors that they it's got amazing. and the amount of money that they've got, and, and the fact that they're taking their filmmakers now to the Palm Springs retreat. Right? You know? yeah. It was like, incredible. Well, they're just trying to they're just trying to be like slick like Sundance because the Sundance when you get to Sundance they try to like they take their fil their directors away so now they're just trying to like end it. Well, I mean, you know, I th I think the <laughs> most it made you feel very important though, didn't well, it? Well, I mean, more important than feel you know going on a, a f fancy retreat or anything like that. The brilliance of it is that you know you can go to a film festival and without the experience of having a day or so with the other filmmakers, you're walking by them in the hallway. You don't even know who they are. So, you know, for, you know, potential collaborations that could come out of there. Um, I could be a huge fan of somebody's film, and I don't even know which ones to go to. I haven't met anyone. So it was a great opportunity to actually meet the filmmakers, find out what they're up to, and there are people I'm sure that I'll go on to work from. Yeah, you know, no, from I here, actually so have met a lot of great filmmakers yeah. on the festival circuit. It's actually one of the... The one of the favorite things. Super you, you fun. Meet. I, actually, my Super friend fun. Holly Mosier, we've been friends for 15 years. She was on my show. We met actually in New York at like the IFC film, at yeah. the IFC event. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so you do meet a lot of great people. Now, how did you come about um, meeting Will Battersby? I want to know the Will Battersby uh, HTNet that films. Was, that was, he's yeah. Your, so is he your executive producer? Yeah, he he's is. Exec he is. He's sort of our, our, our. He's our red phone. Our red phone. He's <laughs> yeah. our red phone. And then he problems like, you make well. me laugh. <laughs> he's true. your red phone, he not is. your blue phone, not your green right. phone. He's your what is no, it like he's emergency red time? Yeah, yeah. He's you like, gotta call Bill Batters. We thing. don't know what to do. <laughs> things we don't know and things we can't handle, we call Will. Yeah. You know, I met he's Will like Charlie like five <laughs> years Charlie. ago, and what he's a, in a cool, room. what a cool cat this he guy is. Very. is. I'm going through your press kit um, this morning, and I'm going through your film and the cast, and I'm like, okay, this is a very interesting film about about the farm, and I'm like, who wrote this? I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden, as I'm scrolling down, I'm like, I'm like, Will Battersby? I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, how the hell did I find him? And then did you find him? Did he find you? Or he, somebody he actually, you it was, it was a friend that introduced us. So a very dear friend of mine who I went to grad film school with at NYU, who is a fellow writer-director, she made the introduction. She just thought this was material that he would really respond to. Oh, so you got a, you got a personal favor. I got a personal introduction. <laughs> That's I did, great. it was very sweet. And he immediately- Shout out to Sophie Goodhart. Sophie Goodhart, yeah. good for Amazing Sophie. Amazing filmmaker. Well get Sophie to dial in. Well, well named Sophie Goodhart. <laughs> you should name your baby, you know, Sophie. Sophie Goodhart. <laughs> Goodhart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So he read it, and then what did he do? What, how did he? Yeah, help he you guys? he really responded to the material, and um, you know he's been with us on this this journey uh, from 
development uh, and giving feedback at the script stage and then helping us figure out how to get the finances together, how to structure the film. You know, there are all these kind of, you know, producerial and, and frankly just business things that as filmmakers we have to figure oh, out yeah, and we have a, to learn. There's a lot to do. And we, it's to not na- just and about the art. The distribution, yeah. which is really That's like right. my art, which is like mm-hmm. the art of releasing movie and, and God is it. We can talk about that. Like, let's we, do. We will. We'll, <laughs> we'll get into the distribution and the festivals and all that. So, um, how many people? So, you, we were in the what was it, three hundred fifty seated Regal Cinema mm-hmm. Theater. We had yeah, yeah two like three hundred seat yeah. theaters. Okay, so sold out. Yeah. Both shows. Both people shows. standing Both up, going nuts. There's yeah. like, there's a, like the film ends in a very sort of powerful, su- almost surprising moment. So there's always this kind of like stunned, let it sink in kind of moment. And uh, and so there's a there's that there's like this pause and there's then people shock. kind of like there's a real shock at the respond because they realize it's over very quickly. Oh, nice! Yeah. I love that. Yeah. People are a little oh, like, that's taser. so great! I hate when that. Oh, that's great! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, we are we're gonna come back, Kimberly and Kurt. Are you guys sitting in a tree? K-I-S-S. <laughs> you guys look like lovebirds. This is Greg Ryman. We're on the green carpet at T Radio V. We'll be back soon. Peace. And I'm Joey Heim. Be sure that you catch our new show, Sports Lust. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m. right here on T Radio V. What are we going to talk about? This is where you talk about why it's called Sports Lust. Because well, look at everybody us. who loves sports, sports Lust. is going to be tuning in to watch you talk sports yeah. topless. Well, I think topless? I don't mind doing that. Will you That's do it? Sports Lust. Every Wednesday, right? At 11 a.m. T Radio V, v. is radio made for T V. Just. No, just yeah. come on, work with me. There we go. <laughs> TV, radio, in TV. <laughs> Hi, this is Slim Jim Phantom, and you got the big beat. We're going to take this music into the 22nd century. We deal exclusively in rockabilly music. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Richie Valens, Wanda Jackson, Janice Martin, the Everly Brothers, Johnny Cash, and everybody else. Thank you so much for supporting the Big Beat here on T Radio V. Hi, we're Marissa and Juliana Stove, the Stove Twins, and you're watching T Radio V. That's radio in TV. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Right the signs. I won't forget you, but I may forget your name. I think I uh, forgot my headphones. <laughs> that wasn't very good of me, was it? <laughs> this is Greg Ryan. We're on the green carpet at T Radio V. I got K and K. You could say K squared, K two, but it's really Kimberly, um, Levine, and Kurt. How do I pronounce your last name? Pitzer. K- Kurt Pitzer. There's a Pitzer College mm. in Claremont. Yeah, in Claremont. That's where you're from. Mm-hmm. How interesting. The how plot thickens. How how original, I should say. Um, <laughs> we forgot our mug. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so you have a two screenings so far and the film tell me a little bit about the film and a little bit about the story um runoff is a thriller that creeps up on you there are things that happen in it that you're not expecting um we shot the film on working farms in rural kentucky um and it takes place uh the setting is uh 
there's there's a real pastoral beauty to the place. Uh, but just beneath the surface, you get a sense that there's something dangerous bubbling up. So our protagonist uh, discovers a crisis that's affecting her family. And she's put in a position of having to make a very difficult decision between who she's going to put first and who she's going to sacrifice. Ooh, yeah. interesting. Can we, um, I think we're going to get the trailer. I want to watch this trailer. Yeah. Let me know if we're, uh, how we're doing on that, Kyle. Cool. We're going to, we're going to watch this. I came across some old stuff in one of the barns. I need someone I trust. Someone I know. I love it. It's a thriller on the green carpet. Thank you. Yeah! <laughs> it's great. Thank you. Um, and it's so funny because, you know, the thing about the carpet is we talk about, like, entertainment and making conscious entertainment and, like, how it affects, you know, our youth. So let me ask you a question. What's the rating going to be on this movie, you think? Well, there's a scene in which the the mother, the protagonist, smokes weed with her son. Smoking marijuana is okay. And I don't know yeah. what they do with that. <laughs> I, don't know, yeah, I don't know what I would, they do with that. It's legal in Colorado. It's pretty much it's legal in California. Here, so yeah, maybe it's I fine. Don't, I don't think they're going to give us an R rating. I don't know. We'll have to check I don't think on so that. either. So is that the yeah, only, there's no so. violence or anything like that? There's an undercurrent of violence, danger, yeah. but there's nothing. No blood. No, it's no gore other than, you know, some pretty disturbing farming scenes, but not things that and there's are something very the usual. dangerous that happens at the end but it's not nothing bloody. that would nothing bloody and and how did terrifying. you was there a spark of the story was there something that like I mean what what made you want to tell this story yeah I mean um, the original seeds of the story came from when I was working as a field biochemist and I got to witness firsthand what it's like when things run downstream and how one thing affects another uh, so that was kind of the, the general thematic impetus for me in telling the story. And I wanted to create a narrative, a fiction story, that would reflect that kind of theme. So in the middle of the story, the protagonist is faced with this very difficult decision that's been brought to her by a, a friend of hers who is a compromised farmer. And he wants her to do something that's illegal. And he says to her, you know, it all ends up in the water table anyhow. Later, when she's trying to convince another guy to help her out, she says to him, you work with the stuff in the fields. So these are characters who know that what they're involved in is dangerous, but they don't have very good choices. So their characters, like our character in life, um, is determined not by the things that we decide to do when we have easy choices in front of us, but by the thing that we choose to do when we're backed against a corner and we don't have any good options in front of us. I love how you're just not telling me how the movie ends. It's wonderful. It's a thriller. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long did the movie take you guys to make? It was actually, I mean, once we got into production, it was pretty quick. Um, because, you know, I mean, independent filmmaking is nuts. So we're like, we had some money, and then you're, you're, you're filming, and you're raising money, and everything is happening kind of in this whirlwind. Um, call it the mix. Yeah, in the mix. <laughs> so that happens very quickly. And then you go away, and you have this quiet time in the edit. Yep. And you're in this dark room, and you don't know, you know, how are people going to respond to this? Is this working? Is, do we have anything? You know, and you just try and stick to your guns and stay with it. And But then you don't know until you bring it out into the, now into did the you, light. Now you have all independent actors, no one famous, Kurt? Is there any famous actors that we the, know? The lead is Joanne Kelly, and she's she comes from a um, different background in terms of she's on television. Uh, she's a television actor. She was on the Sci-Fi Channel's biggest show called Warehouse 13. And okay. They have tons of fans. They have 500 million 
500,000 uh, I was say 500 million is a lot of <laughs> More fans. than I can count, put it that way. I think there are more people. <laughs> I got they have more billions <laughs> and billions But you've never of heard fans. of them. <laughs> We got, about 50, we got what, about 50 million fans, they have I think? Fi 500,000 on Facebook, Facebook on okay. Facebook, fans. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know, I've is never seen Is she promoting the movie? Is she, she out? Is, Absolutely. Yeah, she was she out is. at the festival. Okay. She's, That's good. Uh, loves the, you know, it's, it's a great Sorry she we didn't get her on the show. We yeah. could have had a little sneak preview. She had to go to a wedding. Um, oh, she had to get so married. She, <laughs> she left. <laughs> To a uh, friend's wedding. But to she's, you know, her performance is wonderful, as Variety pointed out. She's just. Hey, you uh, guys, let's talk about screen. this. All right, let's Am do. Am I it. looking at? I don't know how we can. Can we see this Variety um, article? Let me see if we can. Guess. We got Joanne Kelly. Joanne Kelly sparkles and Kimberly Levine's powerful debut feature. This is amazing. Thank you. This is, by I'm the way, excited. this doesn't come out like normally. You get a review, and they're like, "Oh yeah, my review is great. It sucks." You know, nine out of ten times you're going to get a bad review. So the fact that you got a good review. Yeah, the whole thing. If we could quote the whole thing. I just uh, want to see the top part. Can we go back to, uh, besides scrolling down, Kyle, can we just go over the top part? Right, yeah, right there. Just keep going. See the co keep going down. I want to see the poster. Yeah, a little more. If you can scroll down. Now, that's her, right? That's, that's jo Joanne. That's Joanne. Yeah, that's I want to see Joanne. Okay, so that's her, and um, she looks a little spoofed out. Yeah. When yeah, I saw that, I was like, she looks a little like, like this she looks begin, a little manic, this you know? This is the beginning of the third act, so yeah. she's she's going through a lot. Here. She's going through a lot. I mean, I mean, just that facial expression when I saw that image says a thousand words. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So you really are a pretty good director there, Kimberly Levine, or is she just a phenomenal actress, or is it a combination? I think it's a combination. You guys had a good collaboration. We really did. You know, one of the things that's really special about Joanne and her background is that. You know, we were casting out in New York, and I'm seeing all these actresses, and there are a lot of really talented women who come in, but the movie's set on a farm, you know? And, and you have to believe that this person comes from this world, that they inhabit this world in a very organic way. And, you know, in the film, she's working. You know, it's a, work, it's a, it's a movie about working people, so it's not like she's, you know, sitting behind a desk or anything she's got it i mean she's in scenes where she is literally diagnosing cows and working with animals and all you know, kinds of stuff i noticed that because there was so much information going on in the trailer i was yeah. like what is going on here yeah. you know what i mean i mean is that just like well so her, her background so you know she was the, the material was resonating with her in a way that it just wasn't with other people who came in the room and what i found out later is that joanne is from this tiny fishing village off the coast of newfoundland oh and so she comes from a place where you know economy and nature are very tied together and she grew up hunting and fishing and you know and 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 having a garden and all these kind of things so she had a real connectedness to the material so you know in those scenes where she's throwing a 50 pound grain sack over her shoulder and walking with it she really knows how to do that. And there's just a real resonance between her personal background and the character. So that was super helpful. God, I could just see her on the set as a director. What was she like? Cap amazing. Captain amazing. K. Amazing. Right? She's got total New York in she her. Kim? You can just see oh, her. Me? Oh, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> She's great with oh, the Oh, yeah. Actors. I can just see her, like, not putting up with anybody. Let's go. Go to work. Right? Real workhorse. Yeah. It's good. She gets great performances out of it. And where did you go? You went to NYU, you said, right? <laughs> I did. I did. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm originally trained as a biochemist, but then I went through the theater working on and off Broadway, directing and writing. Okay. So, you know, my passion for working with actors and my the craft of that really came out of my, my, my time in the theater. So when I went to grad school for film, that was something that I was, you know, had a real base of knowledge uh, with. So I was able to kind of jump off from there. And what's uh, and what about you? Where'd you go to school? Well, I didn't study film, so I um, I sort of came into it through a back door, so to speak. Through you're the back door man. This, is the back this door particular man. film. <laughs> you married her. I married and her. You made it's a different kind of back door. And and you make a film. And and you made her your producer. I like that. Let's go find somebody. <laughs> let's go find <laughs> a red door. a red phone. I could do it if I have a really good red phone. So we got, you know, Will Battersby helped, and that was good. So. So, but so you, so you never. Is this your first film that you produced? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh wow! So you really walked on water for the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah, guys. But let, let me just let me insert something for a second. Okay. So, <laughs> so Kurt's background. He's he's a writer uh, in in his own right, a fiction and nonfiction writer. He worked yeah. as a war correspondent for most of his career. So for me, having a producer who has seen some of the like 
horrors of hum, you know human atrocity being on set no matter what the emergency is he's like nothing's on fire everybody's okay it's all going to be good you know so that the background that he comes from oddly translated into making a very confident and calm producer. I just want to pause it, Kimberly, by just saying a couple of things. I, I'm not taking away. As a producer, you have to know, have to know so many things. Yes. If you look at producers, there's an associate producer, there's a co-producer, there's mm -hmm. an executive producer, there's a line producer, there's a there's your main producer. You know what I mean? There's a whole team. So what I was saying, like, when he's, when he's walking on water, anytime yeah. you go make a film, you're always learning something new. There's always right. curveballs yeah. being thrown yeah. at you all the time, right? Crazy. <laughs> all the time. And when you think you figured it out, there's something new that comes at you, That's right? right? Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And this, right. this was not a, a this film was not three people in a room either. We were going from farm to farm to farm in many locations, so we had lots of interesting production things to solve along yes, the way. We did. Yeah. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about how many farms. You guys shot. That's in right. rural Kentucky, right? Yes. Yep. All right. This is Greg Reitman on the green carpet at T Radio V. Caught up in this world. I've wasted time. I've wasted breath. I think I've thought myself to death. I was born without this fear. Andy D. On T Radio V. Bing, bang, bing, bing boom, boom, right? Yeah. Andy D. Auntie Radio V's Bobbity Bibbity Bobbity Boo and D Auntie Radio V The Andy Dick Show Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Wow! So but we'll do it. We'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no. Hey everybody, Sean Astin here. You may know me from Goonies, Rudy, The Lord of the Rings, but actually my calling is as a political radio show host. So I am proud to announce that I'm bringing my show, Vox Populi Radio, right here to T Radio V, radio in TV. Thursdays, 12 to two, live. Did I say that it's live? Live. Call in, tweet in, check in. It's gonna be your show. Hello, T Radio V. Hello for us. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Ranazizi. My name is Mary Elizabeth Ellis. My name is Katie Azelton. You're watching TV on the radio. Well, you're not watching it, you're listening to it because radio on TV. Hi, T Radio V. <laughs> Keep that radio going inside that television set. I love T Radio V. Trust her. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Hi, I'm Christina Fulton, and I want you to check out my new show, Playing It Forward with Christina Fulton. Join me as I interview every week the biggest and the brightest celebrities, philanthropists, and CEOs in the world, including a five-year-old girl that is changing the world today. Five years old. What was I doing at five? It's all about having fun, kick-ass music, and making a difference every Friday at 1 p.m. with me, Kyle, and my DJ, Chris Cruz. Be a game changer. Play it forward. Right here at T Radio V. Radio and TV. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Sing it up. Thank you, my wife, Britta Reitman. Every week, my wife, Britta Ann, puts together the playlist, and every week I thank her. Britta Reitman, wherever you are, down at Walt Disney and TV Animation, I love you. Thanks for writing some great music. We're back here on, on the green carpet. This is Greg Reitman with Kurt and Kimberly, KK. You guys, are, I, I actually really resonate to your love. I can just feel it. It's awesome. And the fact that you've made a movie and you still love each other says a thousand words <laughs> to me. You know, most people, you know. oh, yeah, you go through the struggles and the, and the trials and the tribulations and getting everything right. And you're, you're there. You come out. You're now. You're showing at the Los Angeles Independent Film Festival. I want to talk about, um, before, we, before we get into the farms and we get into the issues, um, this film can't be seen only in LA, or is it, or is it going to be? You guys looking at a fall festival release? Is that your plan? We'll we'll take it out to festivals in the fall. For in the sure. fall, so we'll do a whole festival run. Okay. Uh, I think we'll probably have it 
some kind of distribution in the late this year or early next year. Got it. So there's no rush. So you want to enjoy your year. You want to enjoy your film festival. We just surrogate. finished the film. I know. It's so funny. You know, it's a funny. It's a very interesting question because a lot of times the filmmakers like that, that's exactly how they feel. Like we just finished the film and, and, and distributors say, okay, great. Let's just put it out. And the filmmakers say, oh, I want to like enjoy the film. And they're like, no. They're like, that's it. And, they're, and it's a really, it's a hard struggle. I know I have my new film that's coming out and everyone's like, I want to just enjoy it. And like, no, it needs to go out right away. I'm like, wait, you can't do that. That's not right. But, you know, but glad that you, you'll be able to do that yeah. and enjoy your festival run. To, yeah. yeah and go to, to Europe and go to um, enjoy it, you know, yeah. enjoy it. So talk to me about how many farms and the issues between the, the, the what is it, the ducks, the chickens and the pigs? The turkey. <laughs> we had a turkey oh, farm up in Erlinger on northern Kentucky. And mm. then we had a dairy farm in also northern Kentucky and then in central Kentucky we had a hog farm what was going on with the hogs uh, the, hogs. the hogs, hogs are crazy you know big. so we shot in a pen and you know come and see the film so you can check it out but we shot in a pen that houses thousands of hogs are they dirty they're big and no, dirty I would, I would they're say dirty. they're dirty they smell they? I don't think they're dirty <laughs> they smell the well, hogs smell I love it yeah that's an understatement oh is it that bad I mean listen our car after still smells yeah it still smells and if you really when you film in these places just there's no washing your clothes it won't get the smell and wait, you, you also mentioned before that the, the, the Hogs are more dangerous than sharks. They kill more people every year than sharks. Now they biting they people. Bite them, kill. They chew kill. them up. Just a couple of months after we shot the film, they a farmer people. in Iowa, yeah. who'd been, you know, doing hog farming for his entire life, multiple generations, fell down in the pen. They found his dentures. Yeah, that's it. Crushed the hogs everything. Spat his dentures out. I, they ate them all. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Except for the skull and well, the you know, we don't treat well, we don't treat jokes. the hogs very well anymore. We put them in no, these pens. It's, yeah, too, you know, too, it's all. Too. I mean, it's kind of like in slave camps. You know what I mean? I mean, and they're not, very intelligent. And animals. they are. They're all intelligent. Yeah. They're probably like they know like this is their life, and they're yeah. tired. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a big thing actually. Did you see Blackfish? Not to change the channel about the the orca whales. Not yet. You should see yeah, that film. It's yeah. been on CNN Films, and it's about how the orcas are intelligent species and in SeaWorld and, and it talks about how the whales, have been, they, they've been incidents where they've actually killed or eaten some of the lifeguards and at a certain point it's like, look, this is inhumane. You know what I mean? So were you were you concerned filming uh, in well, terms of that you when know, you were on? I, I never I, thought of hogs I, as being dangerous actually. Yeah, I never put myself, uh, my actors or my crew in a position that I won't go in. And that comes from my probably history of documentary filmmaking. So when we got out to the location I got in the pen with all the animals and showed the actors and showed the crew what we'd be doing, and I was interacting Hold with on, the animals. Hold on, you got in the pen with the pigs? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're shooting in in the pens with oh, the animals. Were you nervous at any point that, the, that you might have a hogger attack? No, you know, I think it's important <laughs> with all animals. Animals sense fear. Animals sense how comfortable you are, and okay. it's really important to try So they were cool. So the possible. pigs were cool. So he, he kids, that there was like a... Kim had this sort of Mary Magdalene thing going on where she gets in the pen and the hogs are all like, oh, a nice, unafraid person. And and then our ner our actor got in and he was kind of nervous and, and somehow the feeding mechanism jammed. Which so we didn't know at the which time. Which we didn't know. So they got, th their attention went from their feeding trough to the actor's trousers and that got kind of hairy. And, and so did right, he the trousers? Right he in the middle of a take, they chomped leg. down right on his inner thigh. Oh, God. And right on his he inner bit thigh. Him? Yeah. yeah, bit Is him. Is he okay? His yeah. wife wouldn't believe him that it was a hog. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was a joke. That's, that's a joke. By the way, that's a, I mean, as the producer, though, like you have to have insurance and safety and the, that's like a big... The that's the a farmer, big yeah, the farmer said that they'll go for your ears if you fall down and I was thinking, how much is an ear worth? <laughs> <laughs> so he was. He was. A lot. Ears worth a lot. But that's our actor, crazy. our actor, our amazing actor. No, but that's, actor that's was really like you know the interesting thing about like making entertainment and talking about like <clears throat> you know here you are you <clears throat> you've got animal and you've got animal rights, and so you filled not only pigs but you filled what you turkeys. Said, turkeys. We, we were in turkeys a are friendly, right? Or they're not. Fr uh, they're fr I mean. I was it know, not? At least the right word, but I mean, one thing I did not. Was it an organic farm or non-organic farm? We were, we were, 
we filmed in these places. I, we were looking for the absolute biggest small farms we could find. So no, they're I, massive, no, massive. I got that, Kimberly, but I'm saying because I've been on organic, like sustainable farms out in Colorado, and the turkeys are friendly and they're... Well, this is a free-range place. Okay. This is a free-range. They can come in and out. It's a friendly, So were the turkey, were, the, were they gobbling or were they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they yeah, were Yeah, they cool. were gobbling. Okay, so they, they were gobbling. Yeah. I mean, but, but one of the things I didn't calculate for when we were in the field is that, you know, when you have that many animals, I mean, in, in that turkey coop, there were, I don't know, like 5,000 turkeys. That's a lot of turkeys. In one house, right? And That's not an organic farm. It's free-range. Yeah, it's free range. It's free range. But, but I think it's interesting when you go out into the field. Five thousand like, the turkeys. And there's yeah, reality, that's not that's reality. Because let me tell you something. That's 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 intense. So we were in this pen, and I didn't think about the fact that there would be so much ammonia coming up. What? Where's the ammonia coming from? Well, you know the animals' the byproducts. Oh, they're byproducts. Them, yeah, oh god, they're, they're de- what is it called? They're de- defecation. defecating. They're yeah. defecation. Yeah. yeah. So they're defecating. All of that is in there, Gross. and it's. You know, it's decomposing, and we're breathing in all this ammonia. And oh. a lot of our crew. <laughs> God, I'm. Like, but, but the thing was, it was awful. crazy. How long were you out there for? You could Hours. be out there for a whole day. We were. We oh were. God. But the crazy thing is, you have to bring out a gas mask for the defecation. <laughs> so the actors can't remember their lines. I have no idea what's going on. My poor DP is like, I don't know where we were. We, none of us could figure out what was going I mean, on. Mitch, would you rewrite the script this next time? In, in no. <laughs> The great thing was that it gave, I mean, the whole story I has like this cor- kind of undercurrent of, of danger and, and threat. And being amongst the animals gave, gave this kind of nervousness, not just to the actors, but also in, you know, that's why we were shooting there, because you have these squawking animals and these, you know, this deep kind of hog sounds. And you can, uh, you can feel on screen through the sounds and through the images things like the smell and the, and the heat and the in- and closeness. And the claustrophobia. So, so, so yeah. okay, so you got turkeys, you got pigs, and what else? And then dairy. Yeah, the, oh, the, the cows. cows. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. We farm. were shooting during. How were the they cows? Were milk, they were milking the cows as we're cool. shooting the scene. A lot scene. of cows? Yeah, awesome. I mean, th- like there were a lot of cows. Over a thousand like, cows? No, no not that many. Dozens. But during okay. during the time when we were shooting the scene, so all of the places we shot were working farms, and they're doing the work of the farm while we're shooting the film. Okay. So we're not interrupting their work to capture this narrative scene. It's all bleeding into each other. So it's like a, got a kind of documentary feel to it. So when we were shooting on the dairy farm, they literally milked all the cows in the background, the real farm workers are there doing their work while we're shooting different takes of the scene. I our, love it. Our characters know, are interacting with them. I yeah. love it. Like, talk about, and what happened um, after the, the actor got bit? Was there a problem with him coming back on set? Look no. at that no. smile on your face. The funny thing was, this <laughs> well, was there, the day where, the, where the, 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 you want more money? the Humane no. Association <laughs> person was there with her clipboard, and the actor started shouting how he was going to kill the em- mother effing hogs. And, and that was the Humane Association person was afraid that he was going to carry through with his threat because he had this he had this sort of injection injection gun. gun kind of thing and he's waving it threatening the hogs and she was threatening to close down the set and there was a moment of it's pretty intense it was a moment of that everyone needed to calm down that's uh, fabulous yeah. that's like that's real life intense. scenario and you're the producer did you actually think he was going to give it to him well it wasn't a real gun so no, I got it but <laughs> So she thought the whole time that it was a real thing. She was, yeah, and she was, af- and it's true. We didn't want to make the hogs <laughs> more nervous, or you know, you want to be, you want to be humane and, and do. You know, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but it's such a serious issue in terms of how we treat our animals yes. and animal rights. I know we have an animal rights show here, and you know, and I, and, and I think about like you know, like just that world. You know what I mean? Like, and, and the fact that you've made a film, you know, in that world. I mean, did you did you envision that? Was that something? Where did that? I guess you were a farmer, right? That that you wanted to experience that. Uh, you know, I'm not a farmer, but the the kind of seeds of the idea that I was talking about before, um, about this idea that we're connected, we're all connected, right? Got and it. so that our fate is tied to the animal's fate. That everything is connected, um, and that was kind of the impetus. That I, you know, food is something that none of us can escape all of us have to deal with and all of us use all the time and so it's something that is outside of being an issue right it's that's not fabulous issue. that's fabulous you like brought a real life scenario on the set good for you that was fun it's part of the story you know it's sort of it is the thing that bleeds through this this thriller um, storyline this kind of very intense storyline is this this danger that's not only around the characters but it's also around the food supply now, now, you guys, are you, have you thought about making another film together? 
Look yeah, at you. If, K, you K, will, K, if you K, will. K, coming back for round two. Yeah. Are you going to do another thriller? Are you gonna do, are you I gonna think gonna so. Yep. You I are. So. You got thriller in your yeah, blood. I Indeed. think so. Yeah. Really? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun in the edit, too, because you can really sort of ratchet up the tension. And do you know there's huge distribution, you know, for thrillers, by the way? I know a lot of people in that space. I can probably help you out. We can talk about that offline, actually. Cool. Yeah, I know a bunch of people in that space. They do very, very well. Um, so... LA Independent Film Festival, good Love people, them. good, oh people, good vibe, yeah, everyone loves the film. You're it's giving out cards at all, postcards, you know, yeah. it's all the postcards. You got yeah. your postcard? Yeah, yeah, we have stuff for you. I'd like to see a postcard. We got a postcard? I gotta, I gotta get we off mic. Stuff in He's going to get off mic for a second no and problem. find it Yeah, I know, I'd love to see the postcard. Yeah, the, the festival has been incredible. It's been an amazing experience. There's some other incredible films there. Oh, there oh, we go. We got the postcard. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So there it is. Again, love the artwork. Thank you. Think it's awesome. Uh, I love the simplicity of it, to be honest. Thank um, you. It says a thousand words. There yeah, for me, that image is existing, you know, photographically on a lot of layers. It literally has a bunch of layers. It has nature. You see the leaves reflected. You have. I wonder, stage. though, now, like, as we talk about the plot a little bit, if mm -hmm. I should see a farm field, like, from, like, when she's driving through, you know, just to kind of see the story a little bit, you know? You ever thought about that? To see a, mm -hmm. a you know, farm. You know, the, yeah, the, we, in, the, in, we the, did. in the background at all? Because yeah. it's like, I feel like when I see this, it's like, is this about her? It's or more about her than the, the other stuff. Is if we have to choose one or the other. Did right you guys right. do comps though for art though, or you just had one comp? Usually when they do art, we they have do that. Like, they usually do like three comps to give you like we a graphic. We, we have some other shots that we're using, but <laughs> she's that's very the, directorial the now. Kind of she's like one. she likes her art. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, listen. For, you no, from my documentary <laughs> background, there yeah. were a lot of. Inc I mean, when you see the film, there's amazing images of nature, yeah. of the 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 arena, of the farming arena. I yeah. mean, incredible images. One of the things that we wanted to have come across, though, is that this is a narrative film. It's not a documentary. Uh, I see. And so that was one of the things we weighed with some of those incredible images was, is this to t telling the audience that this is a, a documentary or a narrative? Oh, so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that was a lot okay, of Okay, okay. I'd actually, I don't know, actually. I'd like to go back and, and I mean, for your theatrical release, you might want to look at that. I think that, like, you know, good key art, I mean, because you probably have it, you know what I mean, and looking at those images. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that, I don't know. But I'm not marketing your movie right now, so Jamie. I can't. I can't. I can't comment on that. Um, I think we're gonna about. We're gonna cut to commercial. Okay. I know if you believe it, we're already here on it's our third spot. This is Greg Reitman, live on T Radio V. This is on the green carpet. We're having a fabulous show with K and K, Kimberly and Kurt from New York. Check out their film Run Off. It's a hit at the LA Independent Film Festival. Thanks, Peace. Greg. Join Dave Navarro and friends for Dark Matter, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Right, Dave Navarro here, Dark Matter Radio, T Radio V dot com. The universe is vast, enormous, huge, full of stars, planets, and matter. Some of the matter is so dense that not even light escapes. <laughs> Get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get, get on the mic, get on the mic, Frank! Pardon me, sir, pardon my reach. <laughs> See, and you guys were worried. I think this is going great. <laughs> pardon my reach? Get the f away from me, dude! You are really beautiful. Oh, Thanks, you guys. He's one of the most beautiful people I've ever known. This is pretty much every week. He brings in a guest that tells him how beautiful he is. Pardon my reach? If you have to reach over me, then don't do it! He is the straightest <laughs> gay guy I know. Dave Navarro signing off. Dark Matter. Thank Good you night. for listening. Bye. Dark Matter with Dave Navarro. Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on T Radio V. Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. Hi, this is Danny Woodburn, and you're watching T Radio V. Did it come up? There we go. He's good. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Let's
let's give them something amazing. Mm, let's make them remember using one word. Oh, I'm really batting a thousand today. <laughs> We're back on the green carpet. This is Greg Ryman live at T-Radio V. God, we're having so much fun. I'm so relaxed. I'm kicking back. I'm stretching. I'm on the positive state. I went to Eugene, Oregon. Just had a fabulous time. Um, super excited to meet K&K, Kimberly and Kurt. Uh, amazing filmmakers from New York at the LA Independent. I'm calling it the LA Independent because that's where I saw the ad. Film Festival with their film runoff. Um, Was there a moment when, like, you're sitting there, you have your world premiere moment, you know, it's always, there's always that sigh of relief, I think, when after the, the, the credits roll and you're kind of like, oh, and the crowd sits there, like, did you, did, were, what were you expecting? I mean, what was the, what did you get, what kind of biofeedback did you get from the crowd when you, after you showed, after you showed the film? Well, I think we forgot that there are, you know, Kim writes in a very sort of tonally complex way. So there are moments, I mean, it's a very kind of, um, powerful thriller vibe throughout that kind of grows and grows and steamrolls but they're also funny moments you know little moments and we sort of you know you watch the film a thousand times while you're editing f you know didn't know if that's going to play with the audience and for us you know they they're still funny but we think maybe those are in jokes by now but we watched it for the first time with an audience uh, at the premiere and they laughed at everything that we had ever thought might be funny and then some and that was great. That's a really great feeling. I really love cool. that. Yeah. I love that. When I'm in the movie and I know they're supposed to laugh and they're supposed to feel and they're supposed to cry, and if they're not, I'm like, oh, God, that's, that's like you get worried. Yeah, there was amazing. also a moment of turning around at the end when there were people with their hands over their faces when they were watching the end. <laughs> and that was great. That's what you know. We're like, they are. You're like, like thriller. Yeah. thriller. Yeah. 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 In fact, in fact, in the second screening, there was a woman who was sitting right behind me, and she was gasping so audibly. And we didn't even I, pay I didn't her. know if she was li watching the film or something had actually happened to her. <laughs> like, I was beginning to think something had happened to her, but she was just house? watching the film. So, I mean, that kind of stuff is super gratifying to yeah. see it with audiences. Yeah, no, no, super. I mean, and, and the fact that you're going to have to wait, you're not going to show it in, in the summer at all because you just basically just got the film out. So now you're going to yeah. go out in the fall. And, right. Um, and what are you thinking, you know, in terms of um, festivals? What would be your premier spot? I don't know. We're just going to... We talked about, what, the Hamptons? Possibly. We're just going to... Would you like the Hamptons? If you, or would love to, yeah. I mean, we're... There's, there's so many great festivals. You have so many so film many festivals. Right. There's the Boston Film Festival. Have you thought about Boston there's at all? There's Boston. There, Boston, and yeah. international. I mean, there's Europe. There's Asia. There's so many incredible places to take the film. Yeah. I mean, for me, being from Kentucky... Um, are you going to show it in Kentucky? Yes, we are. Where, when's the film festival in Kentucky? Which one well, is it? Uh, who knows? We what don't know we'll do. what we're going to do in terms of a premiere there yet. Oh, that's exciting. It's really important for me to bring this film to the middle of the country. So I hope that we can do that with the festivals and ultimately with distribution. Okay. So that doesn't just end up on the, the kind of coast, but the people who I think this film will resonate with on an even more personal level, perhaps. Maybe not, but possibly we'll get an, a chance to see it in the theaters. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we also so want to show it where we shot it because there are people in Eminence, Kentucky and Pleasureville, Kentucky and these little farming towns who we want to make sure that they can all come out and see Let it. Let me just so. tell you, shooting there is the best kept secret in the world. The mm. people of that state are so incredibly warm and inviting. Uh, we were Yeah, and supportive. We got access to so many places that it would was be incredibly difficult. Was there a tax rebate you got for shooting in Kentucky? We were below the level of tax rebate okay. for them. Okay, but you. So they you were less one. than a million dollars? Yes, we were just, we were less than a million dollars. Wow, so you really were on a tight string budget. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, like, yeah. Shoot, shooting, yeah. <laughs> we got skinnier. And who, <laughs> who edited the movie? Who was your editor? Um, I edited with uh, this incredible, so there were, there are three people who have taken taken part in the editing process. First was Frank, uh, Frankie. He goes by Frankie, but Francesc Cice Sarda. Okay. He's a really amazing uh, Catalan uh, editor. And then Michael Taylor, who's a New York-based incredible indie editor. So the three of us, the vision of the edit has kind of come from, from Those the three, three of our Yeah, labels. editing yeah. is very intimate. It yeah. is. It and is. And intense. Yes. Yeah. And I think that each one of us had uh, a different we're able to unlock a different part of the puzzle. Yeah, and it's also, you know, the thing about it is it's your vision. So it's like, 
uh, getting your vision as a first time director. Sure. You know what I mean? Like what you really want. Right. How is your music? Do you get, who is uh, your who is your composer? Oh, Look at that. Uh, well, good question. Uh, yeah. What about who, do you have a good composer? We yeah. have amazing composers. So um, our composers are Danny Bensi and Sandra Durian. So you have two composers. They work together. They're you know I by the way on my film I actually had two composers too and that's fabulous. It's amazing. Yeah. They did the um, they did the the music for Martha Marcy May Marlene and Simon uh, Killer uh, and Simon Magic Killer. Magic. They just won a Canadian Oscar for their work in Enemy. Oh my Gene. God! They're Canadian amazing. Oscar. They're amazing. Gene, right? They're amazing. They Gene, they're that's great. And how'd you find them? Was that a Will Battersby? New York. It's this really super cool, you know, New York filmmaking I wanna, community. I want to. I want to meet those um, composers. You, you shall. You, 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 you composers. Composers. Yeah, I'm into I music, and uh, they're that's, amazing. That's great. Yeah. And the other thing I would say about them: not only did they write the score, they yeah. play every single instrument in the film, and oh it's my. all real. Oh, that's it's fabulous. All, it's all human plays. And stuff. how was your art director? Did you have a good art director? Mm -hmm. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Emily Ritzman. She came out of AFI. She's uh, oh, yeah. French, but okay. she's based in Los Angeles. I think art genius. directing is probably one of the most important pieces. So important. When I think so about important. film, it's all about your sets, your layout, everything kind of comes Kim from had that. a very, very, uh, very strong vision for how she wanted the film to look in a palette that she started with, which was, uh, you know, we didn't use reds or greens unless there were very specific uses. Okay. But you could talk about it a little bit, but it was very sort of um, nostalgic. Yeah, I wanted to kind of create a nostalgia for the present moment. So we took a very specific palette. Uh, it was actually taken from a Gauguin painting. And... Um, Use that palette but from a and Van Gogh, which one? Gauguin. Gauguin. Oh, Gauguin. Yeah, okay, Gauguin. Yeah, Gauguin. And uh, desaturated. So we took this painting and then desaturated it. The colors so out. So I wanted to give a sense that this was a place that was self sustaining and vibrant, but the life is kind of been sucked out of it a little bit. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, uh, and, and that also creates a nostalgia. A sense of nostalgia. So, so I assume you had a good cinematographer. Amazing. I can see yeah. that Amazing. already. You yeah. can see she was very yeah. happy with the colors yes. and the way it was shot. His name is Hermes Marco, M A R C. Do you have like the Latin team or something? We have Catalan, a very Catalan, yeah. international. What, what is this Catalan? Catalan. Where, is, where is Catalan from? Bar Barcelona and. Uh, okay. Thereabouts, they're all from around there. That's the fabulous. Moments, yeah, yeah. Hermes, yeah. Hermes did a wonderful job, and he and Kim collaborated on the look uh, seamlessly. It was great. And then we had um, an amazing uh, colorist, Nat Jenks. Okay, yeah, color is so important. It's oh amazing. My God. So it was like all of these people's passion and vision and artistry, and and this collaboration that has come together. And you know, when you start, you set out to do this thing, and you have this kind of theoretical idea, and you hope that you're going to be able to first of all just it off and second of all that it's going to translate into something and I, I feel very grateful that it has no I know I know it's uh, you know it's, it's, it's uh, you, at the end of the day we always we always hope there's gonna be a light at the end of the tunnel yeah right and you, you never know when that light's gonna come and what people are gonna be but I am like super excited Thank for you. a runoff I hope you guys let me know when it's gonna hit the festival circuit we in will. the fall yes. we will. we'll definitely love to get you if you, when you do your premiere I'm assuming you're gonna come back to LA hopefully we'll get you guys sure. back on the show definitely super. you'll tell us what the lessons that you learned <laughs> You know, what festivals you like, which ones you don't like. I'm sure there'll be a lot of knowledge. Well, we love the L.A. F Film Festival. It's been yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, it Wonderful. seems Amazing. like you're doing really, you're off to a great start. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say our time is up. It's just been an Greg, unbelievable, thank you so much. unbelievable been really time. Fun. I really am super excited about checking out this film runoff. This is Greg Reitman. We're on the green carpet at T-Radio V. Peace. You are watching T-Radio Me, Radio and TV.